Health Ministry awaits full report on Go Coffee. New antisocial law to combat mud rumpit and mud larger menace. Good afternoon, I'm Cynthia Arthur. You're watching News on 2. Toughest schools nationwide must conduct fire drills at least once a year. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said the fire drills must be done with the cooperation from Fire and Rescue Department as well as with guidelines from the Occupational Safety and Health Management KKP Handbook. KKP Handbook for Tafi Schools was published by National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH. It contains illustrations that are easy to understand and tips that could be easily implemented in all Tafi schools throughout the country. Artinya, aspect, aspect, keselamatan dan kesehatan untuk semua premis-premis sama ada perniagaan atau pendidikan atau para premis di mana ia melibatkan soal tenaga kerja termasuk guru-guru dan pengurusan diberikan keutamaan dan untuk mengelakkan kebakaran dan menjaga keselamatan the Deputy Prime Minister was speaking at the launch of KKP Handbook for Tafi Schools at Irshadia Adinia Religious Secondary School in Bagandato, Perak, yesterday. The Health Ministry is still waiting for a complete report on the contents of a coffee mixture that is believed to contain a foreign substance suspected of being a drug for further action. Deputy Health Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Hilmi Yahya said it would be a major offence if there were any illegal items in the coffee and that stringent action will be taken against the parties concerned. Currently, Dr. Sri Dr. Hilmi said there was no directive to stop the sale of the premixed coffee but he urged the public against consuming it pending the report. Dia tak akan ambil kopi itu sehingga, sehingga kita dapat clearance. Mungkin mungkin ada orang lain yang tak dadah dalam itu. Ya? Mungkin. Tak mungkinlah ini. Biar syarikat yang dah lama jual barang ini, dia nak letak dadah. Dia ini menjelaskan bisnes dia. Mungkin orang lain, mungkin competitor dia yang letak dadah dalam itu dan menyebabkan uh, masalah yang timbul baru ini. On Friday, Timur Laut District Police Chief ACP Anwar Omar said the initial investigation of the police did not rule out the possibility that the pre-mixed coffee drinks consumed by two Nepalese men, causing them to experience extreme fatigue, contained foreign substances suspected to be a type of drug. The Home Ministry is hoping to gazette an anti-social behaviour act to curb the mud rumpit and mud lajak menace. According to Deputy Home Minister Dato Nur Jazlan Mohammed, the proposed act would empower police to nab these illegal racers. Dato Nur Jazlan said police would also be able to detain these enthusiasts for an illegal gathering if five or more of them were at one spot, even if they have no intention of racing. The deputy minister was responding to a directive by Johor ruler Sultan Ibrahim Ibn Almarhum Sultan Iskandar for police to take immediate action against Mat Rampit. In a statement earlier Saturday, Sultan Ibrahim expressed his outrage at illegal races who had turned a stretch along Jalan Pantai Lido, opposite Hospital Sultan Amina, into a racing track between midnight and 3 a.m. every day. The success of researchers carried out by local universities through the Translational Research Grant Scheme from the government benefits the people. Citing the seawater desalination plant project in Kampong Senok, Bajo, Kelantan, Higher Education Minister Dato Sri Idris Juso said it has benefited more than 3,000 residents in the area. Through a research carried out under the translational grants, the river and seawater can be used as drinking water by the residents through a desalination process using the membrane technology. 
On the seawater desalination plant, Datuk Seri Idris said the project costing 5 million ringgit was the outcome of research conducted by University Technology Malaysia UTM and University Malaysia Terengganu UMT and was among the best in the world. Aku juga kita perlu faham bahawa research penyelidikan ini antara yang terbaik di dunia sebenarnya. Inilah kejayaan uh, transnational research yang telah dilaksanakan di universiti-universiti kali ini ialah uh, proses nyah garam desalination yang memberi kebaikan kepada orang Pantai Senok pada hari ini. He told reporters after launching the seawater desalination plant translational research project in Kampung Senok. Super League defending champions Johor Darul Tazim JDT began their 2018 campaign with a 2-1 win over Kedah in the Sultan Ahmad Shah Cup match at Tan Sri Hassan Yunus Stadium in Larkin last night. The success saw the Southern Tigers seize the cup back from the Red Eagles after losing to their opponents at the same venue last year. In the game, Brazilian import player Marcos Antonio was the toast of JDT when he netted a winning goal in the 57th minute after receiving a pass from Lavier Corbin Ong. Earlier, JDT and Kedah were tied one all when Kedah seized leads through a goal by Spanish import Pablo Palares Marzo in the 15th minute before Argentine Luciano Figueroa equalized for JDT in the 28th minute. That concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, new antisocial law to combat mud rumpit and mud lajak menace. News on 2 will be back at 7 this evening. Till then, I'm Cynthia Merlin Arthur, leaving you with visuals of crowds gathering in the English village of Marston late on Saturday to watch Winter Battle Spring. The Imbolc Fire Festival, which dates back thousands of years, celebrates the end of the dark winter days and the return of light. Highlight of the festival was a clash between two giants, an icy Jack Frost representing winter and a leaf-covered green man symbolizing spring. The fiery battle was won by spring. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant day.